Welcome to another video. So today's video, I wasn't expecting to be filming today because I didn't know. Okay, so here's the context. I ordered these watercolor paints in this box from Arta Miranda. And uh, I wasn't sure when they were going to arrive. And initially this year, I made myself a promise at the start of the year that I would only order myself art supplies for my birthday. My birthday is in almost exactly a month from filming this video. Uh, and I asked a couple of friends and other people and everyone said, why would you wait until your birthday that's a month away to open a box that you got today? And I thought, you know what? They're right. So let's get into this. So I know that, uh, you know, both of my videos so far have been uh, <laughs> me swatching uh, Roman Schmoll paints. And I know that it seems like I have so many already, uh, but I can't help myself. And there are colors that I'm interested in. And you know what? I deserve it. So I treated myself to some more. And to be fair, not blindly, these were planned, so their packaging is pretty nice. Obviously, uh, recycled boxes. I once had them send me um, Roman Schmoll watercolours packed into like a, a Blackwing pencil box. That was a pretty uh, interesting package to unwrap. But anyway, so here we have two boxes Roman Schmoll. One box, Daniel Smith. Ooh, little hint on the back there. I got one Daniel Smith paint and uh, many more of the Roman Schmoll. So let's see what I got. Maybe I'll zoom you in a little bit for this. So first up, if this contains the Daniel Smith paint, then I'll show you that first. Excuse the fountain pen ink on my finger. You know, I'm just a disaster. Uh, but yeah, so the lovely little box. I don't know if this only contains it because it was only a little tube. So let's see. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's also some Roman Schmoll paints in there. Um, so let's just put those to one side. But this is the Daniel Smith paint that I bought. Manganese blue hue. And I was really interested by this color because it is, if I can find it, a PV15, a phthalo blue pigment, but it's super, like it granulates a lot. And I really wanted to try it out. So I treated myself to a very expensive little tube. I can't believe that five milliliters of this paint costs so much money. This is why I'm a, I'm a very much more convert. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to try this out. <clears throat> if I'm gonna do a swatching, I'll probably only swatch the very much but you never know, maybe we have time. And then, so from this other box, from this box, we also had the Roman Schmoll Lavender, the Roman Schmoll The Tint, which I believe is, uh, it was renamed from the somewhat problematic uh, Flesh Tint. Sorry about the lighting, by the way. If it's super cool in here, it's because it's snowing outside. So, yeah, the reflections are a little bit more than usual. How do I open this box? Oh, look at this. So exciting. So some of these were a restock. And I won't I won't swatch those because they will have been included in my other video. So let's put those there. So this one is transparent gold ochre, which I got in the hopes that it would be a nice vibrant yellow, like my Naples Yellow Deep, but not so opaque. And oh my goodness, that looks so vibrant. I'm so excited to swatch that. And then we have, I believe this is French Ultramarine. Yep, this is a restock. This is a restock. So I'll put it down here. Bring these in. So professional. This is, oh, wrong way. This is Perylene Green Deep, which on the face of it looks quite similar to uh, Perylene Green, but I guess we, we can do a direct comparison and see how that goes. That's a new color. This is, uh, I bet this is in Green Earth, yeah. So this is a paint that I think a lot of people are disappointed in because 
I think it's quite hard to re-wet and quite low tinting. But I wanted to try out try it out as like a light like pastel green shade that I could try. And that you also you'll notice that there's a bit of a pastel theme going on with these paints. Because it's the one thing that I don't have in my collection right now. And I'm looking to sort of branch out a bit, you know. Four more. Gosh, this is so exciting. It's this one, which is Quinacridone Scarlet, which I already swatched as a restock. Or more like a, I don't want to run out of this colour ever. So I just bought another one. This one. Which is probably Cobalt Cerulean. Which looks like an absolutely lovely colour, quite similar to the cobalt blue, but we'll have to compare it against the, the others and see. Uh, Pyrrol Scarlet, I want to say. Yes! So this is a, another um, candidate on my adventure in the aims of finding another good warm red, but I don't know. It looks, or it looks more orange on camera than it does in real life. But I will give it a go, see what it does. And finally, this is Quinacridone Gold. So this is the Quinacridone Gold, the old one with the PO48, the Quinacridone Burnt Sienna that's been discontinued. And I wanted to get an extra pan because I just think that this is such a lovely colour. So these three, quite a nice primary trio actually, maybe we should do some mixing with that. But yeah, these three were a restock. And then these seven are new. And an honourable mention. Anyway, so as you can see, these paints become beautifully wrapped. They are all full pans and they come with wrapped in this watercolour paper that has the, the pigment information and the colour number on the ends, the name on the back, and then on the front they have this uh, hand-painted swatch on the watercolour paper that's uh, around the edge. So these are really lovely to receive. Um, the only thing is they do not have uh, the anything information about the paint written on the actual pan. So you have to provide that yourself. So I'll give you an example of how I like to unwrap these. I like to cut gently the paper off. She says, dropping it all over the place. Usually uh, I do this at my desk and it's a little bit easier than when you're trying to do it on camera. So I take these, this bit off. And then you have this lovely piece of a, a record of what paint you bought. And I like to stick these in my stick these in my sketchbook so I can remember when I bought uh, different paints. By the way, aren't these such a lovely palette altogether? I think they're beautiful. And then you take this uh, sort of foil paper off here, and underneath the paint is in this pan, and it's always covered with this sheet of wax paper that you have to take off before you can start using it. Um, and if you live in a warm or a humid place, you might find these are a little bit sticky, and you need to uh, like put them in the freezer for five minutes before you can take this off without the pigment sticking because the paints contain honey. Um, but actually it's 12 degrees <laughs> in my kitchen right now uh, and I think they'll be fine. So you can just peel this off. And there you go. It's ready to go. So I'll do that for all of these. I usually put the colour name and the pigment uh, on the side in permanent marker so I can keep track. So I'll get to that and then I'll bring you back.
Okay, so uh, my fridge is making a noise, my neighbors are making a noise, but we're gonna try <laughs> anyway. So here all the labels are stuck into my sketchbook. Um, let me try and find the other page. So yeah, this is my normal way of doing this, just helps me keep a record. Looking at these colors all together, <laughs> by the way, um, I noticed that uh, this was my sketchbook color palette for December, which is something I'll talk about more in a future video. But look at these colors. Maybe there's something, uh, maybe there's something in the air. That's quite funny, isn't it? Anyway, no swatch grid today because I am just too excited to stop and draw a bunch of squares. So I have some clean-ish water and my trusty Spin Synthetics number one. And I'm just ready to get started. So do this live action for you. So Pyro Scarlet is a color that's used by a lot of people. It's like a really standard, standard pigment people use PR255. But I wasn't sure how this one was going to look because I think sometimes they can be more or less orangey or not. Where am I? Camera focus. Okay, there we go. Maybe. Just look at that. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's a really nice colour. I can't deny that that is that's beautiful. When we do circles today. You know where everyone talks about Natasha Newton's pebble swatches. I'm not sure these colours are really <laughs> very pebble-esque, but maybe we can um achieve some kind of gradient just to show how they behave. That's that's amazing. <clears throat> I mean, it's still a little bit pink in the in the like watered down tone for me, but I think maybe this might be as good as it gets. Alright, so next up is Green Earth. Just doing these in the order I pick them up. Not really uh, thinking too hard about it. Seems to be re-wetting okay. Decent amount on my brush. Okay, that is a really nice, yeah, that's a nice colour. I know that it's, uh, like many people have said, it's a little bit weak, not super pigmented and highly tinting, but I like the colour, the hue of it is really nice. I think, let's see how much we can build it up if we get a whole bunch. Yeah, I guess that's about as deep as it gets. But that's all as deep, um, that's as deep as I'd ever want it to get, I think. Because that's just like a really nice colour. And the smoothness is really nice. I think with some brands it's not such a smooth colour, but I think it granulates as well, so let's give it a bit of room for manoeuvre there. Some water. Pop that on the done side. This water's getting a little dirty already, but that's alright. It's just a swatch. This is lavender. A lot of brands do a, a lavender colour. I know Daniel Smith do, and I also have the Van Gogh one, but uh, this has three basically, well, the blue pigment and the violet pigment that are in this, alongside the white are my favourite ones. They're like the ultramarine blue, ultramarine violet. Really nice. Oh, I think it's going to granulate. <gasps> so exciting. This is a true first impressions, by the way. I've, <laughs> you can see I've never used these before. Oh, I love that colour. Obsessed. Oh, if that granulates, I am... I'm all in. It does make your water cloudy though, that white pigment. Let's just give it a little bit more. Yeah, that's definitely granulating, way more than the Van Gogh one that I have, which was, you know, it was a nice colour, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. Got Perylene Green Deep. Sometimes they have a little bit of a waxy coating on them from the wax paper that they use to protect them in transport. By the way, uh, I think it was like yesterday or the day before, Jackson's Art actually uploaded an interview 
with Roman Schmoll talking about his paints and how he comes up with the ideas and how he got started in the business. And it was a really interesting video. I'll try and remember to link it in the cards. But let's see. Whoa. <gasps> what? That is so deep. That's amazing. Right, let's go. <laughs> Bit much. I got carried away talking and was just... So you can see the waxy coating on that pan had absolutely no effect on, on this. That is, like, it's like a forest in a pan. Wow. Yeah, maybe a little bit more of a yellow tone than the traditional PBK31 perylene green. Wow, that is, that's such a surprise. I wasn't expecting to love it so so much so quickly but this is i think this might i might prefer this to perylene green right now in terms of my personal taste so this is the cobalt cerulean that i wanted to compare to all my other cobalt blues because usually this color is a little bit more greenish in most brands but for some reason when i saw some swatches of the roman small one it looked like it was more warmer reddish so we'll see but oh my goodness is it intense Look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it is a little bit greenish. It is quite green, but I, in the way that a, I would prefer this to like a phthalo blue, because I think of the texture and the hue are just that much more interesting. By the way, I'll put labels on these at the end and hold them up to the camera so you can see everything closer. I was going to go for a walk today, but... We've had about an inch of snow, but maybe I'll go anyway. <laughs> if it slows down a little bit, I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee or something. It'd be a nice cosy activity. So this is the transparent gold ochre, which is so bright, by the way. So yellow. Like some yellow ochres can be really... This is PY43, which is the natural earth colour, I think. But some of them can be really quite dull. But this looks so bright, even on the swatch on the on the pan. Yeah, this is a colour that I was looking for. So transparent. Really nice light tinting. This goes really well with all these other colours, I think, as well. Just absolutely amazing. How much can we build it up? Get a little bit more dense over here, but that is, that's such bright colour. You would never think that that was a, an earth pigment. I don't know where he's getting these, <laughs> these earth pigments, but they are absolutely amazing. Finally, the tint, which is a colour I never really thought I'd get because I'm not really a pink person, as I've talked about before, and I'm also not really a multiple pigments person but I do like the I do like a peachy colour and I thought maybe it would be just nice in a colour palette you know to go alongside other colours you're not going to mix with this but let me just see if I can just gently wash away that waxy coating and then where should I put it how many more do I have I've got this one and I've got the manganese blue mm. okay let's just watch this first so it's titanium white, yellow ochre, and pyrrol rubin in this paint, PR264. It's pyrrol rubin. Rubine? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> this is a really, really pretty colour though. It's quite muted. It's not um it's not like a bright pink. It's really I mean, it's actually not that far from my skin colour. So I think that they also called it on the website, it was like flesh tint Caucasian or something, but I think it's really easy. It's just easier to change it, isn't it? It's like a dusty peach. How about that? Dusty peach. It's quite like a, it's, it's quite of a, more of a tan colour than I expected with that yellow ochre. I don't think it will granulate, but it looks so nice painted out like that, doesn't it? So here's the line up on the side. They look so beautiful. Oh, I have no regrets. 
I never regret buying new paint. Tell you what, for the bonus. <laughs> and also, look at this. Look at this. You couldn't make it up. That's exactly the colours that I was using in December. And I just bought them all in watercolour. But anyway, maybe we could try this manganese blue since we have space on the page. And dirt, apparently. <laughs> just keeping it real around here again. Just a wall. Okay, I'm glad it didn't explode out because I didn't have a plan. But let's just give it a little swipe onto the page. Looks so bright already. How does this go? Okay. Very transparent. Very bright. Like, <laughs> it looks so bright compared to all the other colours on this page. This, this thalo blue looks like fluorescent highlighter blue. I do like it though. Well, I'm, I'm very interested to see how it will granulate because thalo blue colours don't aren't traditionally granulating. But actually I read something somewhere and I also heard somebody else say this, that thalo pigments do granulate, you know, when they are like synthesised and then people process them so they're transparent. But this could be a really interesting, really interesting colour to use. It says like Kingfisher blue. This makes me want to paint a Kingfisher. Maybe I can do that. <laughs> so many ideas. But that's absolutely amazing. No regrets. No regrets. Always worth spending money on paint. That's the lesson here. Sorry for being a bad influence to all you. <laughs> other art supply collectors out there but this is uh this is proving me right i think anyway i'm just going to uh, label these let them dry a bit more and then i'll give you a close-up and that's that okay so the paints have mostly dried now and i put some very untidy labels on them uh had a little bit of an accident here with the gold ochre i accidentally put my hand in it uh, but the good news is I can confirm it does lift off of the paper, this colour, <laughs> if that's something that's important to you. So I'll just give you a bit of a close-up for each of these. The Green Earth, I think it does show some granulation, but not. it's very subtle. I need to try it on some cotton paper, I think, with a maybe more of a texture and just try it out. The lavender, though, definitely granulates. I think it's still a little bit damp, but that granulation is absolutely spectacular. Oh. Doorbell rang, as I was saying. Uh, yeah, this is this is really amazing. This lavender color, like it, you wouldn't know that it had a lot of white in it. Honestly, it really looks so soft, but also the texture is really nice. And then I already showed you the close up of the transparent gold ochre, which doesn't seem to have a strong granulation or anything. Maybe a little bit of texture, just in a nice way. The cobalt cerulean blue, really nice color. Oh my god, just never ends. I swear to god. Are the people in my building quite, quite done? <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Back to it. This, yeah, the cobalt cerulean blue has that lovely granulation I'd expect from a cobalt colour. And I do quite like the colour. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do a comparison a little bit. Perylene green deep. It's sort of cauliflowered when I added the extra water, but I think that that adds such a nice effect. It's really nice. The tint, this lovely sort of peachy tan colour. I don't know how quite I will use it yet, but I'm um, happy to have it in the family. And then this manganese blue hue from Daniel Smith. I mean, goodness, the, the, the granulation is lovely. It's coming across a bluer on camera than it is in real life. As the I said in the last swatching video, you have problems with turquoises and teals on camera. They never come out quite right. Uh, so yeah, let me grab my other swatches and we'll do a quick comparison between some of these colours. Okay, so <clears throat> since the Pyrrole Scarlet was part of my quest for a warm red, I think I would say it is warmer than Scarlet Lake. A little less pink, but obviously more red than Benzimidazole Orange. 
I still just love this. I, 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 I still dream of a slightly orangier red, but I think that it's hard to find a single pigment that does that. I think that I might need to just accept that I want a mix, uh, a mix of colors. And then also, I should have done this on a single sheet of paper, it's still attached to the pen. <laughs> the cobalt cerulean blue compared to the other cobalt blues. I'd say it's somewhere between the cobalt blue PB28 and the Aquarius cobalt blue. Like a little bit greener than cobalt blue, but not as green as Aquarius cobalt blue. I do prefer the cerulean to the Aquarius cobalt blue, I think. I just like a warmer blue. But they're all nice colours. I just think you, you probably don't need all three of these if you're in the market for a granulating blue. You could probably pick your favourite. My favourite's probably just the cobalt blue. But I had to know. So here I am putting myself out there for you. Anecdotally, I think that the cobalt cerulean PB35 is quite close to the manganese blue hue. From Daniel Smith. Not quite not nearly as vibrant, but not that dissimilar in tone. I do like it. I do I like I like the manganese blue. And then to compare the perylene green deep against the perylene green. I put a lot of paint in this perylene green swatch. It's actually a little shiny. <laughs> so I think this one is deeper for sure, and also more yellowish, less blue green. Um so yeah, that's an interesting, I didn't know what to expect and I am pleasantly surprised. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and putting up with the disruptions. Uh, <laughs> this is just the realities of filming from your kitchen table in an apartment building. But yeah, thank you so much for staying with me for this video. Hope this was helpful. Hope you like seeing all these new colors. Um, yeah, please give this video a like if you if you did like it, share it with a friend who might also enjoy looking at these colours, learning a bit more about paint, and subscribe because I have so much more where this came from and I can't wait to share it all with you. So yeah, bye for now!